Hi guys, it's Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. Uh, excuse the state of the hair, but I've uh, been doing quite a few jobs today. Um, so uh, something's got to give. Um, and it's got to be the looks, I'm afraid. So uh, anyway, uh, going to do a um, start of a video, uh, which I'll carry on and show you progression. Uh, it's just going to be on uh, propagation of some chrysanthemums. Uh, so I'll turn the camera around and show you. These are some hardy chrysanthemums. Um, got given them a few years back. Uh, they've been flowering uh, quite a while. Um, there's some more in the garden as uh, as per the, the opening shot, I suppose, that are still looking good. Um, and uh, yeah, it is a name variety, although I can't for the life of me think what the, the name was as I got given the plants. But they always flower for Christmas. Uh, it's lovely um, golden uh, yellow variety. Anyway, I want to bulk up the numbers. Um, I've uh, got a little section out front and I want to add some more to it. So, easiest way to do it. Um, these ones I've lifted up as they were in the wrong position in the back garden. Um, you can see they've got a few little sprouts to them and a bit of straw. A few little sprouts, but uh, what we want to do is uh, take some cutting off them. So, got them set up in this uh, propagation tray. It's a heated one. Um, not bothering with a top cover for the time being, as uh, you just want the base heat to it. And all I'm going to do is just cut them back like so which just gives us some uh, cut stems of a couple of inches in length, like so. So the top bits, um, because they're not growing vigorously out the top, it's kind of pointless trying to, to root those. Uh, it just take you too long. So instead, what we will do is we're going to do what's called basal guttings. Um, but in order to do that, you need to stimulate the, the growth of the plant to start with um, from the base. Um, so I've probably got a bit too much compost in there. So we'll get those potted. And what you're trying to do with the, the base heat plus the fresh compost is encourage a load of these uh, basal shoots to, to sprout up and get going and then we'll take our cuttings from that. You'll notice that now I've repotted, um, I've actually buried the, the crown, so the uh, the main part of the plant, um, I've buried that below the, the compost. Uh, the reason for that is that you want to encourage all those um, uh, basal shoots that you did see at the beginning you want to encourage those to be nice and strong and firm at the base and to then come up through the compost as you'll get much more uh, viable material from that so that's the reason for that um, so uh, yeah this is the first stage and then as uh, as they start growing um, I'll show you the next stage for progression now, so you can see then we're now um, seven days on from when we did the potting up and we've got a little bit of uh, shoot development coming there. Um, obviously there's a top shoot growing, but we could do with some basal stuff coming on. But certainly that looks promising and um, the other uh, rootstock that I left in the garden, that's starting to flush as well as I mounded a bit of soil around that. So um, you can see it's going to be, well, not too long actually before we can do some cuttings. It's 4th of February, so we're month, one month on exactly from uh, when first lifted and started doing the video on the chrysanthemums. Uh, you can see that I've these couple of pieces are lifted from the garden, certainly doing nicely. And um, I've got some sections on there that are big enough for uh, cutting material. So that's what we're going to do today, is just take a couple of cuttings. Nice and simple. Um, so you can use either a pair of sharp secateurs or a sharp knife. Remove some of the cutting material on there. Uh, 
tend to end up with a little bit of greenery left, but uh, that's not a problem. So if I just whip off some uh, uh, cuttings from that plant as well, um, you can either use a sharp knife or just the, the tip of the secateur. And for these, where you've got just the, the basal growth from below the compost, you're actually going to be cutting down underneath the compost to cut the stem below soil level. Like so. So that's what we've uh, we've got. Uh, so you can see this one here that came off the uh, the top section there. It has a different sort of coloration to it. It's like different composition to the others, but it will root quite readily. Um, you don't even need to use this to be honest, but uh, rooting powder. You might as well do a bit of a belt and braces scenario, make it marginally quicker. Um, I've got a tray already uh, done with some uh, just some fresh compost, giving it a good water in. That's your tip from your cutting. Dip it into your compound, like so. Let's, and then I just tend to use the lid from the compound and pop the, comp the cutting into the compost. So again you'll notice it's going in probably about an inch down. Um, you just That way you're almost covering over the, uh, the bit that was covered originally by the soil before you cut it out. Um, so nice and quick to do. Don't take much effort at all. Um, So on this one, where it's a, a harder stem, you just uh, have to treat it a bit like a normal softwood cutting. Literally just pop off the basal leaves, so otherwise they just rot below the soil level anyway. And pop that in, firm around. And you can either leave like that or stick in a heated propagator unit if you've got one. So you're kind of thinking, well, We've only ended up with four plants, well, well, four cuttings. But we have, but um, these are easily root. And don't forget, you've still got these uh, mother plants as well. So, um, you know, you've already uh, doubled the amount of plants that, uh, that you started with. And actually, if you just grow these on for the year, uh, you'll get nice, good, strong plants that will flower. And then you can just essentially keep taking cutting material off uh, these older ones and you'll probably get another uh, two successions out of those this season anyway so you could quite easily end up with about a dozen or uh, dozen twenty plants by the end of the year um, not all of them obviously will be big enough to produce flower for end of season but certainly going into next year you could end up with uh, a good quantity so Cuttings, very quick and uh, easy way um, in most instances to bulk up your numbers. So I'll revisit this uh, as and when the cuttings have taken and just uh, show you the next stage really. Well, we're back to these. So they're the first four chrysanth cuttings that uh, came off the plants. As you remember, they were just uh, couple of pots that uh, was taking the um, stem cuttings from so we did actually manage to sneak out the fifth one it's a little bit more spindly but uh, two and a half weeks has gone by you can see they've got some decent growth on them nice and sturdy in the in the cell and then we're just going to pop pop them out of the cell trays to pot them on so I've grabbed this size pot ten and a half centimeter pot so uh, be one, one cell plug to one pot and uh, yeah, allow them to grow on to uh, form some plants of their own and uh, hopefully give me some flower for uh, December. So we've just got some normal multi-purpose compost pots, let's say 10 and a half centimetre. So we just put a bit into the, the base there. Worse. Put about um, a third of the way up, get the cells, 
can give them a little squeeze and then these plastic ones quite easy so you can just push them from the base and we can see what we got. So you can see there we got decent root formation. It hasn't made the entire plug but carefully you should have said. Pop them in um, and then we can just fill around. So just use your fingers around the outside to gently firm in. Give ourselves a little bit of a margin between the finishing layer of the compost and top of pot so that allows you to water in nicely and it won't be well it won't matter the fact you're coming higher up on the stem because as we know from uh, this little um, video anyway that uh, chrysanthemums root pretty easily so they're actually form more stem root outwards from the sections that are grown or covered I should say which will give you a nice sturdy plant so that's all we're doing so I've just got these other four remaining plants to get done all done one two three four four and a half possibly five plants depends how it gets on uh, that's all the cuttings done um, obviously they originally came from the two mother plants so we've ended up with the mother plants which are still sprouting uh, put them back in the garden now um, and then these are going to be five additional plants so uh, pretty easy uh, really and you've got plenty of time to uh, do your own stem cuttings um, as I say you can get out there now still still take some um, soft cuttings from your chrysanthemums bulk up the numbers and um, yeah e even if they're summer flowering varieties you've got uh, ample time to uh, get some viable plants to get flowers from um, certainly like these ones here um, which are the winter flowering type yeah they they definitely make size by uh, by the winter so they won't produce the or start setting bud until about the October time so loads of time for that anyway um, but yeah kind of rambling now thanks for watching the video um, as always hope you found it of interest if you got any messages uh, on plant related stuff um, or DIY please feel free to send them to me and I'll get back to you uh, please subscribe to the channel it's um, yeah it's nice to see so many new subscribers and uh, keep enjoying your garden and I'll see you soon bye for now